Bonjour. One day, we went home, and my father told me we were going to Nigeria. There was a woman there, and my father sold me. When he took the money, he told me to wait, that he was going to buy bread. So I waited, and my father left. He ran away. I was afraid. Unfortunately, we've taken in kids who have been sold for 20,000 CFA francs, which is about 30 euros. One in every three children under 18 is being trafficked nationally or internationally. Benin is one of the countries that exports, so to speak, the most children, who go basically to Nigeria to work in the quarries, who go to Gabon, who go to the Congo. But there are also a lot of children from Togo. There are also many Nigerian children who move from country to country. These kids... When they leave the country, they don't know the language of the other country. They have no family relations, so they aren't worth anything and have no rights. So in a foreign country, they can do what they like with these kids, from sexual abuse and mistreatment to forced labor with no rights. And sometimes, they can only eat once a day, and that if they've worked. Some of them don't even know who they are anymore. Some even forget their local language. If they leave Benin for Nigeria when they're very young, and we get them back after six years of trafficking and forced labor, the children have completely lost their identity. The child doesn't understand and says, why have they done this to me? And when it's the people who should be protecting them, the people who should be keeping them safe who sell them, that's very hard to accept. My father took me to the house of a friend of his, and the friend took me to Nigeria, to a lady's house. The lady gave him money. Trafficking isn't the children's wish, but they suffer it. They're forced to. So the children, instead of having a happy childhood playing, are forced to work. They told me to sweep the house and wash the dishes. I prepared the food, washed the clothes, went to the shop and sold. Trafficking is a terrible, dangerous situation for children. Because it kills children's hope. The first thing we work on is identifying the trafficker. So we work in the markets, above all in the place where the taxis are. It's in these taxis that these kids often go from one country to another. Apart from identifying the traffickers, we try to work with families, because sometimes the families don't know that these children have been sold and trafficked. The family thinks that the person who comes and offers, give me your child, I'll take them in. I promise to take them to school. I promise to look after them like my own child. Then these families don't know in the end what's going to happen to these kids. The first cause which everybody is aware of is poverty. 
We're also talking about poor living conditions, parents who are people without the minimum they need to live. In the countryside, buying a pen for 150 francs, about 22 euro cents, is a big problem for the parents who don't even have the 150 to buy the pen. Another of the causes is that there are people who know this is lucrative. Anybody can take these children at the market, put them in a car, and take them to another town or sell them, offer them for exploitation or forced labor. It's easy to go from one country to another, and nobody identifies you, and nobody stops you. This makes the job of trafficking easy, and so there are people who do just that. And I think another of the causes of trafficking is that the current penal code in Benin isn't very clear about these things. And it's very hard to take measures to change this situation. I think the Child Protection Brigade could find out more. Child trafficking in Africa is a serious problem, a plague that is devastating our countries. As a general rule, every day we pick up an average of six children who are victims of trafficking. There is a trivialization of these phenomena. Socially, they don't have much importance. You can hit your wife. It isn't very serious. Children can work. It's accepted. And it's very hard to fight against this. It's a form of slavery. It's today's slavery. Modern slavery. The child didn't know where he was. He couldn't get used to the people in the house. And one day, when the lady sent him out on a message with her daughter, he took his chance and ran away. When I left, I saw a lady, and I asked her how to get to the border. She told me to go where they take the motorbikes. The man took me to the Benin Embassy, and they took me to the Family Ministry. Generally, these children don't come back with much. When they go under these conditions, they normally come back in a bad way. The state doesn't have structures to take them in. The Don Bosco Center is the only credible center that takes in all the children. Even if the children don't come back from this department, they know the Don Bosco Center is there. And they lie, saying they're from Ume to get into the Don Bosco Center. I spoke to the priest and he told me to come to the center. Most of the children we take in at the Don Bosco Center have not had a mother-child relationship, and they lack love, an emotional deficiency. Most of the children develop forms of aggression related to what they've gone through. In all of them, you can see the anger they have inside against the adults who made them suffer this situation, and sometimes against the parents who let them go. They are children who have motivation difficulties, because in the trafficking situation, they aren't usually allowed to think for themselves. They've always been under some obligation, and they're very often depressed.
Il a le moral à terre. Jules was in very low spirits because he wondered whether he could have any kind of future. We have to motivate them a lot and support them so that they can return to a learning process. The first thing is for them to gain some self-confidence. Going straight to the cause of their suffering causes them even greater pain. We have to go gradually. We help the child to open up, but through play, because they've got a block. When the children get here, the first thing they ask for is to go to school or to learn a trade. You see right away that they're interested in their future. This is a child we've taken in who hasn't started school yet. It's a bit difficult to enroll him because classes have already started. But in the end, the principal has agreed to take him in. This morning he'll be starting school. Are you happy? <laughs> Great. You're going to start school? They aren't on the street anymore. They aren't working anymore. They're with us. They're guaranteed food and health care. They're in a protective environment. So we ask them, and you? What do you want to do with your life? We encourage them to be happy to be part of a family to be loved and accepted for what they are and not for what they have. The best future for a child is to live with their family. Even if they're poor, they're people who love these kids and it isn't poverty that can stop us taking a kid in. But love, education, the family atmosphere, that can build a kid. I was very, very happy to find my son. It was too much for me. Trafficking a child is a terrible thing. I don't wish it on any parent. Although the child was on holiday with his mother, the father went to the mother's village to cause trouble. The father didn't want the child to be with his mother. He wanted them to give him the child so he could send him back to Nigeria. Finally, we appealed to the child judge, to the president of the court, and the child was officially returned to his mother. Now the child lives with his family and is still in school. We have the chance that a kid who's been trafficked, a kid who's been sold, a kid who had nobody to call him by his name or love him or hug him, to see a possibility that, in time, this kid will smile, will start to play, will be able to speak in public, be able to say his name, be able to write. That's worth more than all the money in the world, and that's enough for me.